everybody. I am going to work on my heritage cookbook today. Super excited about this. A friend had given me tons of paper and like these chipboard pieces and just tons of ephemera die cuts, vintage um, die cuts and paper. And so I made, I took this old Betty Crocker or Better Homes and Gardens cookbook that belonged to my mother and decided to make it into a place where I could write family recipes because I have quite a few family recipes and I'd like to document them. So last night, um, I decided to decorate the cover so I took a big piece of scrapbook paper that she had given me and I glued it down as you can see. And I've been watching Nick the Booksmith and um, she, when she glues onto covers, she uses a roller to like just get that glue all spread out. I just use this three-in-one beacon, or when that runs out, I'll be using this Fabri-Tac. Um, but I don't have a brayer or whatever, but I do have this uh, from Pampered Chef for rolling out dough, and it has two sides. And I don't use it anymore, because I don't really make hardly anything with dough. So I use this just to spread it out, and it worked perfect. So yeah, <clears throat> new tool. <clears throat> um, I did that. I have some pr lots of lace that I've gotten from thrift stores and also from the clearance section at Joann's and from S.R. Harris. And I glued this lace on the back and I left the back plain. And then I have these letters, stickers that are a little bit thicker, letter stickers, but I I ran out of a lot of them and I used them in scrapbooking. So I made an E, I made a T, that was a J I made into an I. This was something else and I made it, it was an A and I made it an E. And then I used these little round things for my O's and put those around, put a little bit of lace here and a button and I wrote my name at the bottom. And I made sure to put my maiden name in because a lot of these recipes are, um, like from my mother and her, my grandma's and stuff. So I wanted to get um, those in here as well. So inside, um, what I did is I saved the best dividers because it was pretty worn and used those. And then I took all these scrapbook papers and many of them are from the ones she gave me, my friend. And I know you'll be happy to see this video. <laughs> like this was from her. And I believe, um, not sure about that one. That one might have been one I have. That might be from my recollections. Um, this one. And then I, and look at this. And then I also had some of my own papers that I put in here too. But it's pretty much all scrapbook papers. Um, I think the ring binder lends itself really well to using scrapbook papers. So I just picked different papers and stuff that I felt would really, isn't this fantastic, um, look good in here for documenting recipes. And last night I, um, so I did the cover last night. So this morning I got up and I did this. Um, this is a chipboard piece um, from the set she gave me and it's called Farmhouse Paper Company is the name of it. Lovely die cuts. So I put the chipboard really, and so I put the glove, the oven mitt on here, and I put a tiny bit of lace. And then I sewed some netting and some pinkish lace, a mauve lace, I guess, because I felt like it really did go well. It picks up the lighter color in this, and put that on top, and just sewed that on. So I thought I would decorate, start decorating these dividers, um, and I decided it would be nice to do this one with you. So I took, um, this is what it looks like. The back has like pictures and stuff, and I actually like that picture, so probably keep that one. But I thought about the front, <laughs> so I went to my own scrapbook papers and I decided that this would look really good right here and um, it just plays off the yellow so well. This tag was in another one of the things she gave me and um, 
that's not sticking. It says favorites, and I thought that would be a good uh, thing to put in here. I might use this favorites one just as like an index of the different sections, like listing who made what. And what I should do is the next time I make these dishes, I sh really should um, take the time and take a picture of them so that we have pictures of the dishes I made. And actually, I do have pictures of some of them. Um, I just haven't ever printed them, so I could totally go back in my pictures um, and find where I've done these recipes and I've taken pictures of the recipe in process. So that would actually um, make a lot of sense, come to think of it. <laughs> So I'm just going to lay this down um, right to the tippy top and a little bit, maybe a tiny bit. Yeah, I can do it a tiny, tiny bit. Let's just position it up a little before we flatten it all down. This glue is so good that I don't worry about it with paper. I know the paper is just going to stick awesomely. Planner, glue, pen. I think you can get them on Amazon. I got mine at um, Beth Solar Shop. Rock in your note, rock your notebook. So um, there, I really like that. And I thought I would just do um, a little decorating. I'm going to just tear this piece here, and I'm going to put it right there. I want to make kind of a little layery type tag. I'm thinking, you know, so let's just, I do like to have things matched, of course. Um, it's very hard for me not to have matched. <laughs> it's just the way I like things, you know, that's, that's just me. So let's put this on here. And I can do a little more with these, you know, like I could, once I get this on, I could actually do some sewing. Um, I want to use this piece of, it's like a plastic netting. It's kind of what you put in drawers so things don't slip. It's kind of a, or on shelves to keep things from slipping, like in your kitchen. So I thought it would be really cool to have it in here. And I'm just going to put it like this for now because I, I think I'm going to go ahead and sew over the top of this. So I just want it to be tacked, tacked down. And then I thought I would put this and this on this page like that. So let's put this one first. Just love all these things that she sent me. So beautiful. Um, so I hope to get some headway today. It's snowing out. We're in a big snowstorm here in Minnesota, especially in the cities, because that's kind of the bullseye this storm so they're expecting about a foot of snow when it's all done and so my plans for the weekend were kind of tossed out because of the snowstorm which means um, when I wasn't going to be able to craft at all now I can craft so that's kind of fun um, at the Goodwill I found um, some buttons and a bag of buttons. So here they are. And I thought um, it might be pretty just to put one of these buttons on here, like this one. See all the buttons? It's great. My mom used to have a button tin. I remember, I remember her having a button tin. <laughs> Actually, I think I like that one even better than this one. Yeah, that's the one, people. So maybe what I'll do is I'll sew the button on, and maybe uh, instead of using my machine, I'll just put a tiny bit of lace behind it. Let me get my lace box. I do have some laces, um, things I picked out for this, but it's always fun to do other stuff. This is my, this is the lid with my scrap pieces. This is my lace box. So I want to find, I got this at Goodwill, like all these tons of 
little pieces of lace and colors and they're mostly like trims but they're so perfect and oh look at here's some of that um that that what do you call that you guys know I'm not a sewer so I don't do a lot of sewing <laughs> but that binding stuff you know and actually why don't I take some of this and this was just like the best haul ever for um, a, a video I mean for doing this sort of thing so Finally getting to use this stuff because it's been a while. I've had it. Oops, excuse me. I should be like over here talking. <laughs> um, I've got all this material I pulled out as well um, that I want to use in this journal. Like, look at this. I love this so much. Isn't this the coolest? Like, I could probably put this little scrap right here and it's already frayed so I could put this here or let me pull this one out because I love this one this one almost goes more because of the lemon the lime piece in here but look at this so what if I kind of just trim around this move this out of the way I'm kind of getting some ideas while I'm while I'm sitting here on what I can do all right like I could totally go like this or just bring it down here still put the button right here put this material here and then take a little bit of this like I'm almost thinking all right I'm almost thinking if I go like this then I can lay the button right there okay put the button here and then I could totally put this pitcher of lemonade right there and then I could put this like this so without the cloth or with the cloth that's the question the day. Hmm. Maybe if I put this down first and then put this here and then put this here. You know, I think it has to be without this. The more I look at it. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to stitch this on. I don't need to use a sewing machine for this. Let me grab my needle and thread. Of course I don't have it <laughs> sitting in front of me because that would mean planning ahead a little bit, right? <laughs> so yeah, anyway. That's what I'm gonna do because yeah, it's just snowing like crazy. What happened is um, we were supposed to have this whole <clears throat> church thing seminar <coughs> from 6.30 to 9.30 last night and today 9 a.m. to um, 4 p.m. And then we were going to pick up my granddaughter and have her stay overnight. Well, since they were predicting like near, like there's blizzard out to the west of us, just west of the cities, or in Minnesota. Um, I'm right in the Twin Cities. Um, there's blizzards. There's a blizzard going on. And then here in the cities, we are like right in the main swath of the snow. So yesterday it started with rain, we had sleet, we had hail, we had a wintry mix. They canceled our meetings because uh, we're 
they're predicting anywhere from, um, well, pretty much, we're pretty for sure going to get a foot by the sounds of it. So a foot of snow, um, and is probably po probable, maybe more, some areas will get more. And of course, we've got gusting winds. This is April, people. <laughs> gusting winds up to 40 miles an hour today. Um, some snow fell last night, so my husband, he just went ahead and um, went to work last night because he works about 30 minute drive normally from here. And so he went, he is going to have to be up anyway at 9.30 to um, clear snow at Bethel University where he works as maintenance, does residential maintenance. So he, um, he just decided to, okay, now I need my thimble. Hang on a second. <laughs> I rarely use a thimble, but sometimes you need it. Um, he decided to um, just go up and spend the night because the roads were going to be bad. And he, since he had to get up anyway and be working at 5.30 in the morning, so he just did that. So that's why I came in the craft room last night and decided to just do some of my own, you know, crafting things. Because why not, right? And um, so today we're supposed to get the bulk of it and it goes all day overnight into Sunday and then yeah then it's cleanup time and um, and then we're expecting another snowstorm Wednesday into Thursday and the, this weather pattern just is horrible just trying to like you know, it's just awful, honestly. It's just awful. So yeah, not a lot you can do about that, right? Just put up with it, I guess. Okay, so, like I said, I'm, I'm horrible at machine sewing, but I have done plenty of hand sewing, um, repairing stuff, like mending, and my mother, my mother taught me to um, oops, I got a piece that did not cooperate. I got a loop sticking up. Taught me stuff about like mending, putting on buttons. My mom sewed. She could sew. She doesn't have any problem sewing. My daughter learned at nine years old and she, from a, what I would consider a master sewer, and she sews all the time. But I did learn that if you wind your button, like you're doing a button, if you wind it around like that and then knot it off, that um, it seems to hold the button on better. Now that's if you're like using a button all the time for stuff, <laughs> right? And anyway, I want to, I'm just going to catch this seam binder. I remembered the name, <laughs> seam binder. And, um... I'm just going to catch it like this so that it stays where I want it to stay and just do a couple of knots right there so it's pretty well hidden just like that and then there's only that tiny bit on the back which I don't want a lot of bulk on the back I'm going to let this string come down like that on here I think that looks good and then all I got to do now is adhere this right to here and because this is so bulky and this is a thick paper I'm going to use this glue instead of the other glue I just think it'll it'll work better so yeah I want to decorate some of these dividers up today um, I have dreams of working in my garden journal getting that started because I've got the book for it I have saved a ton of ephemera for it. It's going to be like flower garden. Flower garden and 
botanicals. I guess it's more botanicals. I guess that's what it is. And then um, fairies. So I got a ton of fairy stuff, and I really do love fairies. So that's kind of my plan. So let's put this baby down right here. And let's just, I'm so excited about this book. And the really cool thing is that this is a book that can be passed on to generations. So um, I can pass it on to my daughter. It'll go to her. Then we'll pass it, she'll pass it on to Sadie and on and on I hope. I hope somebody doesn't just get rid of it thinking it's junk when it's it's a heritage journal. See? I'm super liking this. Very very much liking this. So I think if I bring over my cookbook. So this will go in here, and then this just sticks out just a little bit. Um, I really like it. And I can do something on the back if I wish, and I will eventually. I think, like I said, I want to leave this, and I think I'm going to put a piece of paper or a strip of something um, just right down this edge. Probably, probably would make sense if I just use this same paper. Um, and put it right down the edge, which, 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 I do have paper. I still have some left right there. So really all I have to do is mark where I want it to go. Um, like right to here. And then I need to just mark how far it needs to go down here, right to there. Pull out, um, let's just pull this out so I can work on it some more way I want. Um, pull this out and let's just do find that little mark right there line that baby up okay and then find the other mark right there cut that up all right and then this one i can just like glue on with this i don't need any special like glue for this particular one so I'm just gonna get right to the edges. Oops. I do get glue everywhere, I think. I think that's just my nature, <laughs> to get glue everywhere. Oops. Okay, so then I just have to come right here, glue this on right here. Super easy, and it should glue over to this okay too. This is something I should have done first. <laughs> Remember that when you're doing these pages. <laughs> um, so yeah, and now let's take a look. Because now I think I got it the way I want it. So we'll slip it in there. Okay, you open your book. And you have the cover page. And I open it and I have this beautiful little layered thing that I really like and this paper here. And then I think, like I said, I might just do like an index for my cookbook in here so I can add recipe and I can leave room for recipes that I add and find. And hopefully my daughter and my granddaughter will add recipes to this book as well and it really will become um, a true heritage cookbook. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and I hope to um, come back and do some more pages with you um, later on. Bye.